Hello, Space Lab. I'm Charles Liu, astrophysics professor at the College of Staten Island and associate with the Hayden Planetarium. I wrote this book, The Handy Astronomy Answer Book, and I'm here today to answer your questions. The first question is, if I'm traveling near the speed of light and someone else comes toward me near the speed of light too, will we be nearly twice the speed of light relative to each other? Would we be traveling so fast in different directions that the time to reach each other would be distorted to compensate for the speed? That is a great question. Normally, we think of objects that say, something's going this way five miles an hour and something's going this way five miles an hour, we add them up and it looks like they're going 10 miles an hour toward one another. But according to Einstein's theory of relativity, it turns out that things are more complicated than that. At slow speeds, up to even a million miles per hour, that's a very, very good approximation. But as you get close to the speed of light, you have to add velocities slightly differently using a relativistic velocity addition formula. So how does that work? If, say, I'm watching a spaceship come in this way at 90% the speed of light, and another spaceship coming this way at 90% of the speed of light. On the ships themselves, it will look as if they're approaching each other at 99% the speed of light. Now, if we kick it up a notch and say this spacecraft is coming at 99% the speed of light, and that one's coming at 99% the speed of light, according to what I'm seeing, they will see each other going toward one another at 99.995% the speed of light. So, there will be some distortions with relativity, but overall, they will never actually go faster than the speed of light relative to one another. The second question is, let's suppose an object is moving faster than the speed of light. If an individual were looking at this object whiz by in space, would the light coming off the object and hitting your eyes be trailing behind the object's actual position in space? In other words, would the object appear to be moving at the speed of light even though it is going faster? Another good question. Unfortunately, there is no object in the universe that we know of that can travel through space faster than the speed of light. So we really can't tell you what happens if an object were moving faster than the speed of light. All of that is just speculation because we don't have the physics or the experiments to be able to confirm it. Now, if an object were moving almost at the speed of light, say 99, 99.99, 99.99999% of the speed of light, you would see a couple of interesting things go on now. One is a function of the motion, an effect of the motion, which we call the Lorentz contraction. So the object will actually appear to be shorter, to you that is, in the direction of its motion. Second, the clocks, on that spaceship or that object would actually be running more slowly. Time would actually pass more slowly for that object from your point of view. So if you were able to listen to some radio on that object or something, it would sound more like this compared to you on their point of view. From their point of view, it would still be the same. So those are some effects that are consequences of Einstein's theory of relativity if you're going really, really close to the speed of light. The third question is, how is it possible for galaxies to travel faster than light but still comply with the theory of general relativity? Another great question. Isn't it true that objects cannot move faster than the speed of light? Well, it turns out that that's true in an inertial frame of reference. That's a kind of a technical term, but it basically means that locally, nearby objects cannot travel faster than the speed of light compared to other nearby objects. But the universe is not local. It is global. It is cosmic. It is huge. And it's expanding. So the universe is not an inertial frame of reference, which means that a galaxy over here being carried outward by the expansion of the universe and a galaxy over here being carried outward by the expansion of the universe could actually have a relative speed compared to one another of faster than the speed of light. So the way you can get that expansion faster than the speed of light is just to allow the universe to expand a longer period of time and to have two objects very, very far apart. You can think of it maybe like this. Take a couple of yellow sticky notes, little tiny yellow sticky notes, and put them on a small balloon. Then blow the balloon up. As the balloon expands, those two sticky notes are expanding away from one another. They're not expanding themselves, but they're being carried apart by the expansion of the balloon. Similarly, 
you can think of two galaxies being carried apart by the expansion of the universe. And if they're far enough apart, they sure can be going faster than the speed of light relative to one another. Thanks for the great questions. If you have a question, please be sure to leave it in the comments below. The question with the most likes will be answered in the next round by another expert. Hello, Space Lab. I'm Lawrence Krauss, director of the Origins Project at Arizona State University, a theoretical physicist, and also the author of A Universe from Nothing. And I'm here today to answer the following question. Why is there something rather than nothing?